Thank you for joining us on Diaspora Lounge. I hope you had a good week. This episode is continuing from the last one. But before then, if this is your first time here, we're happy to have you. And we hope that you become a regular member of our family. Let us know your thoughts in the comments on the episodes that we've had. Go back into our library and look at the topics that resonate with you. And come back and let's share thoughts on everything that we're discussing. The main reason we started Diaspora Lounge is so that we can do better and have better results from our decisions. We want to dig deep into the things that we may not really be paying attention to, and we're missing out on the good things of life because we don't really understand how to tackle the issues that we have. But let's get into this discussion. Last weekend, we started talking about setting our children up for the future for relationships because everything that a person is starts from all their life experiences. Um, our mental state affects everything and all the relationships that we have. Sorry for that long intro. Okay. First thing you want to do is to regain your yeah. power. And it takes to the Oh my God, you need to see what she's going through. The husband broke her neck. And from our childhood, from our experiences, from the self, from the way that we see ourselves, that's where our relationships take strength from. I was saying that just before we started this conversation, that I had received a message from somebody and I, I didn't have time to look at it. And then the person called me and I quickly said, oh, I'm so sorry. It'd been hours. It had been hours. And I hadn't been able to look at that message. But in my mind, I had been thinking, I want to hurry up and finish what I have to do so I can go and see that message because I want to hear from that person. But um, I was also thinking, what if this person is thinking that I'm ignoring their message? And then the person called me. And immediately I said, I saw your message coming, but I haven't had time to look at it. Please, I'm going to. And it was fine. That conversation went fine. And the person was like, okay, okay, when you're done, let's talk. There was no, there was, the person was not upset at all. But I know that there are several people that I have had that same scenario with, and they just get upset. And to me, I understand why they're being upset. They're upset because somehow they feel like I haven't given them importance. And then from there, they begin to question our relationship. But do you see how that plays in? If you feel confident in yourself, you're not going to be in a hurry to feel that somebody is disregarding you in a situation like this. And so I, I, I feel that there is one thing that sets us up for a good relationship with other people, any type of relationship, family and whatsoever. It is having self-esteem and self-confidence in yourself. But how do you get to the point of having self-esteem and self-confidence? What can you do to yourself, to your children, for your children to have the self but if you think that there's something else that's bigger, please, let's share. Tony, go, please. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, Self-esteem, I think all those things, that's from preparation and how you grow, uh, things that you learned growing up. Uh, in today's society, what we learned as um, the practices and conducts growing up today might be way too harsh for the younger ones because um, a part, a portion of society might consider it a threat or abuse or whatever you call it. Now, um, me as a person, sometimes I try to borrow a leaf from the creatures that were here before us. Uh, my people always say, in other words, when a goat or mother goat is eating, the, 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 the little kid, the kid learns from it. And so this happens in every other um, spheres of animals or birds. It's the same thing, they never change. They continue the same thing that their parent taught them. And when they are able to get, uh, grow up to a point and able to fly or walk, they present the same trait as their parents taught them and these are animals and they cannot talk like we do but they communicate and they communicate way better 
But we that are supposed to be the homo sapiens, the, the most intelligent one, keep finding it difficult. Every time we keep making rules that dictate our lives and change our lives, and we feel that we know better, or we feel that, yeah, nobody can tell me what to do. And when we have this, all this kind of uh, whatever syndrome, you know, using that and growing up, uh, it gets to a point where the I don't care attitude, because let's take, for instance, the kid growing up, you take that I don't care attitude. Well, one day you're going to be a parent. Now, that I don't care attitude, if you continue with it, it's, <laughs> you're going to eventually give it to your child because that child will learn that this is how the world operates, you know, by just being whatever or I can be whatever. There are always restrictions, and that's why we have governments giving us rules and lines that we cannot cross. Now, government and family, it almost works hand in hand. In your family, you are the government. The government are the parents. As long as they understand how their system works and are able to understand the, the, the difference between discipline and abuse, they can now create a good conduct for their kids as they are growing up. They learn that this is this. You cannot cross this. Um, and if you don't know no malo mapuwezi is what my people always say. You start from the home uh, to start getting beautiful. You start uh, how, um, in a short form. Uh, charity begins at home. <laughs> so you start from the home to learn what you need to be before you take it outside. And as you grow, you already have that formula for yourself. Whatever it is. But if you have no formula, these are the kind of people that when they make mistake outside, it's hard to correct. And they transfer those habits or those traits onto their kids because mm. they didn't know a lot very well. And that's where we, call, we talk about self-esteem. But I'll let my partner go because I'm, I'm sure that he's got quite a lot too. Yeah. Uh well said, Tony. Man, that 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 angle was uh, was extremely was extremely eye opening. Um, even though there are things we know, but the angle you took it from, which is very correct, uh, how it has become a problem for us to pass on the right habits and the right uh, traits onto our children. And I say, and I say it from the point of view of the fact that I, I, I come to the conclusion that it is a, it's out of carelessness, and it's out of uh, not, uh, not uh, conducting our, ourselves in deliberate parenting. Parenting is not just about giving birth to a child and watching the child grow. Parenting is deliberate. You want to see this outcome, even if you did not have it. The first thing, uh, we, because we come from different generations and uh, our parents have different, different levels of exposure and enlightenment. So you, you probably would not expect a, a, par or a, uh, a parent that, that grew up in certain circumstances to have developed certain attributes sometimes. Yeah, you can have a lot of respect, you can, but there are still some many attributes or habits that you garner from existing within a particular environment. So we, we, we will exclude or we will uh, excuse some of our parents, you understand me, for not having set, for having not developed certain habits and certain uh, certain um, uh, um, at, uh, attributes or traits, but wherever, whatever level you find yourself, whatever level of education, whatever level of exposure, whatever level of character trait that you seem to have developed as a parent, you know the ones that are wrong. If you sit in your quiet times, you will know the things that you have done that are not right. Now, 
it is for you now as a parent to be deliberate, to say, okay, those things I'm doing that are wrong, or maybe society, the positive side of society frowns upon, I should not pass it on. It is your duty. Not just as in, and that's where being deliberate comes in. As parents, we must be deliberate in not passing the wrong traits to our children and in ensuring that the, the right traits that we have are passed on 100% to them. Those are the two responsibilities that we have. And it is a deliberate effort. It is a, it's an effort, it's a truthful effort. It's an effort where you tell yourself the truth. You own your own mistake. Hmm. Maybe based on the environment you grew up and whatever whatever happened to you in your childhood, whatever level your parents were, whatever, whatever environment that surrounded you, that shaped you. But you know those things. Okay, I want to give you a very good example. Okay. Having well, a I short fuse. Oh, oh, hello? Hello? Having a, having a short fuse. You know that having a short fuse will never get anybody anywhere in life because that person most likely will fumble, will mistake, will misspeak, and will act wrongly at the wrong time that most of the time will cost them th important things in their life. So you know, even if you have a short fuse as a person, you know that this is not something I should pass it pass on. So even when you, when you exhibit that short fuse in front of a child, it is your duty as a parent to call the child and say, no, forget that daddy did this or mommy did this. That is not the way to behave. Don't let that, don't, daddy made a mistake, mommy made a mistake. Don't do that because that can cost you in the wrong place. So those, for me, I feel those are the things that, because 100% of parents cannot be 100% with the right traits. Do you understand me? They can, you cannot be. You will have your bad side. But the duty of a parent, do not pass the wrong traits to the children. Oh, wow. These are so great. Thank you so much. Um, I love the angle that you took it to. Guess what? I had another phone call before, this, before we started again. And this time, the person was saying, are you sure you want to have this conversation? And I was like, why not? <laughs> and the person said, because what you're doing, because this is, parents will not like this. And I was like, why not? This is for us to set our children up you yeah. know, for, for success for the future. And the person was, was saying that because will parents want to own up? Because this is exposing them, exposing us, that, you know, exposing our faults. And then you now said when you were talking, Aki, you said, Parents cannot, not all parents will be right all the time. And the way you even said it earlier, you said it that some of us, all of us make mistakes. Yeah. Maybe before today, maybe before last week, before these conversations, maybe some of the mistakes that we were making, we even excused ourselves and we just flung them away with that carelessness that you guys mentioned. We just feel like, hmm, that happened. But now that we have these conversations, we recognize that every little thing counts. Every little thing counts. So if we really want to give our children the best, it's for us to recognize when we've made a mistake. How does this thing impact? Once you do something that is wrong, you know that you've done something that is wrong. Now, as Coco said last time, we put away the feeling of embarrassment or anything. What is more important is that our children grow up healthy people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I was I was just going to okay. Coco is with us. Wow, great. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Drive in. Uh, what Thank I want you. to say to everybody, uh, anyone who has any form of guilt or the yeah. other, I want to say this: you are before you become a parent, you are already excused. You're already excused because you don't how know. Do you mean? Please explain to us. How yeah, do you mean? nobody goes to any university, parenting school. <laughs> yes, or, or or any school where they do parenting. <laughs> it's a job. No matter how much you've seen many people parent, <laughs> you are still when you parenting, you are learning on the job. 
So we will always make mistakes. You will always we will always make mistake mistakes. But the the most important thing is to own it and make sure that those things do not pass on to the children. Mm -hmm. And anything you will do to ensure that will make you a parent more than sticking to your guns and staying on your high horse. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, it's not always it's not always big big things, right? Even those little no, little yeah, things. Like yeah, the conversation we had last week. Anybody yeah. who's seeing this, please go back and watch that. Um, the title is something about will your child make a good partner, um, or would or are I'm you blaming your, your partner's no. parents? Something like that. Make sure you mm -hmm. go and watch that because we always think it's big things. Oh, I'm, I'm I don't tell lies. The ones that are obvious for your children. Oh, I don't steal. No, would you marry things. your child as a spouse? Yeah, yeah. little things. Yeah. And um, and you said, uh, and that person was that person said, we are exposing parents, and parents will not want. To, they, they won't like. Parents will not like this. And I was like, well, the thing is, we have to tell the truth. That's why we have that spiral lamp, and the truth well, will set you free. Well, and yeah. a lot of the friends that we're talking about, they clutch the bible so it's like i'm like you holding the bible let's almost like to talk about the bible and talk about god but to do what is inside it is where the problem is that's where the problem is and if you do that and we follow the tenets of the instructions that we have there it's not i keep repeating it's not for christians it's for any human being yeah. you follow those tenets we will get the best of everything so i, I <laughs> not saying this because i'm a saint or because i've always been a saint or because my eyes are open my eyes are open now, and I know that these things we have to be very careful, especially if we love our children and we want them to have the future. Remember that they always say that um, the child is the is the is the father or mother of an adult. Um, and in other words, we are all growing, even though that you chance happens to make you an adult and chance happens to make you a parent you still have the eyes, the same eyes that you had when you were a kid. But along the line, somehow something tells you, I think I am this and I've got to be this. And, and in everything, there's always a choice. So when you get to a phase that you are, you ask yourself, now that I am here, should I take this path or this path? And now that you get to the next phase of that, now I have a kid, should I take this path or this path? Now, any path that you keep choosing defines you and defines your kid. Now, it's up to you taking the right path. Whatever path that you're taking, there's always going to be mistakes. Now, our kids look up to us as idols, gods, the big thing, all that is there to guide me through. Now, if you are able to understand the look of your kid when he look at you and how much they see in you to or hope in you to guide them. That is a sign. That is something that should tell you, I got to give everything. You love your kid to give them the sweet stuff. You love them to give them the hard truth as they grow up. You know what? I. During, I, I understand you. I understand where you are at now. You know, back Tony, in my day. No, Tony, you're, I think you're assuming that we understand what you're saying. I think you're, yeah, being, yeah. you're being philosophical. Can you, like, hit the nail on the head? Talk about, mention, say exactly okay, what you're saying. Okay, so the thing is, when you teach them, do not exclude yourself when you teach them. Okay. Baby, I made this kind of mistake growing up. My duty now is to teach you so that you can somehow avoid making the same mistake. Do you know why? Because it took me longer time, but maybe if you avoid it, it might take you a shorter time to get to your destination. Nice. In other words, share, use yourself, share your history, your goods and your bad and your odds with your child, children or your child as they are growing up. Okay. It probably might be a very good, yeah, it's a very good lesson okay. process. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, Coco, before you came in, and actually, let me bring us all back. The main thing that I wanted us to to talk about is self confidence, self esteem, and how it affects everything. I'm going to tie it to siblings, 
because as I was saying that I've um, listened to a lot of sibling issues and what I see is people talking about envy, talking about um, rivalry and all that. And with the experiences that I, the phone call that I mentioned earlier, I feel, tell me if you think differently, that one of the biggest things that makes people difficult in relationships, and I am talking about every type of relationship now, be it family, just friendship, even work, and particularly romantic relationships, is a lack of self-esteem because it makes us unnecessarily suspicious and accusate, accusate <laughs> having an accusatory tone and unable to trust and unable to be to give the best of ourselves. So let's talk about self-confidence and self-esteem. And you let me know if you can think of a better thing that will help anybody in relationships. Because when we're talking about siblings, the reason why somebody will want to lord it over another or refuse to listen to the other or, or want to always be, be seen as the best, you won't be struggling to be seen as the best if you really had self-esteem. The reason you are struggling to be seen as the best is because you want validation. And that's, that's stemming right. from a lack of self-esteem, isn't it? Coco, are you able to talk? Um, my daughter is holding the phone up and is on the car speaker. I'm just slightly confused when you say um, that, you know, I'm just trying to really grab, just um, grab the context here. Mm. Because he said um, that is people that strive to be the best or compete against their, the competition is all because of self-esteem. I, I, I don't know. I tend to think the other way around because what I do know with most mm -hmm. siblings is, you know, they always look at that one, the, the one single one, or maybe the two, two, or normally it's always just a person that everyone chooses to hate on. Like mm -hmm. the whole clan of siblings, let's say mm -hmm. there's six of them in their home, and for some reason, five of them, and very, you know, are knowing Thank to you, the one funny. person. You almost forgot that, okay, yeah? Yeah, um, to the one person, all of them, I think all these five siblings, hating on one. And I do know um, quite the opposite of what you're saying, but that's why I said I need a little bit of content. The, it's always the five, the other five are actually the ones that have that complex problem. They're the ones that have the low self-esteem. And hmm. they tend to, yes, Look at, you know, the way you said it presents as if it's the one person, as in that successful person or that go-getter is the one that is competing. No, funny enough, the go-getter doesn't have an issue with her or his confidence because as they are, they, they, they're just full, not full of themselves in a bad way. But you know mm. when you believe in yourself so much mm -hmm. that you believe that, listen, I could literally touch the sky mm -hmm. at the start, sorry. And it's all these other siblings. Now, the fact that it's just this five of them hating on one, mm. they actually play on the emotions of people that care to listen to them and spread rumors. They smear, campaign that one sibling, and they just go, that's why we don't like her. And people mm. now look you're at the fact that, it. okay, fine. Uh, you know, you're talking about it, a completely different issue, and that's a real issue, too. That's yeah. a real issue, too. That's that's why I wanted to that's why I wanted to say something. Um, I, I think we should not really dwell on maybe inter inter siblings uh, quarrel. Yeah, that's an all new topic, uh, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's a new new. But what we're talking about basically is that how because the truth about it is that the fact that there's even a, a squabble between the siblings eh, mm. is a failure on the part of the parent. Of the parent. Yep. Yeah, so let, let's okay. even dwell on that, really. Okay, yeah. what do you want to say about that? Yeah. And, and okay. I can, sorry, I quite agree with you, because I tell you what, you know, I don't know how old your kids are, but I do know, I think you have a 10-year-old, because you mentioned it, I think it's 10. The thing is, right from when they're little, 
this is yeah. my belief because I'm a parent, you know, mine are not too old, but I mean, they've gone past that two, three year old stage. No, I you would not notice. Oh, you do. Old, 16 year old and 18. 18. Good. Now you've gone past that stage. You would have noticed the instincts when they're about two, three. Yeah. Okay. You will notice the instincts of those that share, those that don't share, those that are selfish, yeah. those that are not selfish. So you would notice it. Yeah. Then as a parent, it is your response because children, they'll behave. Listen, at that age, every child is a narcissist at some point. You say I'm back to that word. And it is for you at that base. We all were once narcissists, but we changed because of our parents, right? Right about the age of about two, or just under two, you've, let me give a, a practical example so everyone understands what I mean. For example, your children, right? You notice by the time you have a first child, you didn't really have a problem. Then by the time the second child comes, you know there's a stage where the younger child wants the toys of the older child or whatever it is the older child has. And we all did it. Every, every parent did it. Just because you don't want the baby, the eight-month-old baby, to cry, you will look at the two-year-old sibling, elder sibling, to say, oh, give him the toy, give him the toy, he's just a baby. And quite frankly, at eight months, you're just a baby, right? Then the baby gets to ten months, one year, you're still doing the same thing, disenfranchising the older one to give it to the younger one. Now, it gets to a stage where that baby is no longer the odd eight months, 10 months, one year, 18 months, now getting on to two, two and a half, you will notice that that child would have developed a pattern of always wanting the elder sister's or brother's toy because it's been a pattern that you've encouraged. But as a parent, what do you do? You assess that child and you say, listen, you're no longer eight months, 10 months, 11 months, 18 months. You're not about two, two plus. No. If the child says she wants the elder sisters, whatever, you're like, you're not going to have it. Come on, Lisa, do you not know she's older? And that's where parents come in to yeah. take away that narcissistic character. Yeah. But that's why yeah. I, I, I said that right. we were all narcissists. We were all born because we learned from a very early age to cry, you get it. Cry, you get it. But it comes an age where... The parent, it is your responsibility to say, uh, 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 uh. this child now has enough sense to know okay. that they shouldn't right. be. Okay. You, you um, get my point. So yeah. it's just to support what Tony, uh, sorry, what um, Ake is saying that, you know, back to this topic, it is the parent's responsibility. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. That's, that's yeah. Okay, yeah. I want to quickly say this. There's something that used to happen when my children were very little. There's something that used to happen between me and my wife. My wife used to be somehow not too happy about it. You understand me? But I, I more like I stood my ground. And that is doing, uh, trying, do, mothers are more guilty of it. So, sorry <laughs> to say. Yes, mothers are more guilty of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. of the emotional state yes, of mind. Yes, mothers yeah. are mo but That's I right. will stand my ground and I'll say no, no, don't. My I was I, I no. was so I, I was so intentional about not letting you know there's there's what they call the tra transfer when a child is born when a new child is born there seems yeah. to be an automatic transfer. Of all the love and affection to and the, the new one. and all to the new one, and what mm -hmm. that does is that it leaves, it leaves uh, the the older one. Yeah, it, it, it's only people because that's actually for, for some women. For some women, not all. I'm, I'm not yeah, guilty no, no, of no, that. No. When I say women, I don't mean all. <laughs> you know okay, that. Okay. You know, I'm okay. just saying. It, it, majority it of be clarify that. Some fathers okay. are actually guilty of it too. You understand? Mm. Some fathers are, but most of the time, because the most the women are much more closer. Okay, but but how about this? How about dealing with it too? Because there are some cases where people actually do the opposite as well, where they are like, "This one is older, and and so, this one is older, and so they always want the other ones to do something to favor the older one." 
they always say, this is your older sister. This is your older brother. This one is older than you. So you must do this, you must do this, you must do this. So most we have of the time, two. No, most of the time, it's always when the younger, that correction always comes when the younger one has grown, like uh, Coco said, when the younger one has grown up a little older. But some people actually do it too late. Uh, if you do, if one does it as at when Coco is uh, suggesting, it works. Yes. Because if you want to start correcting a child, it's from about two. You so what start... I wanted us to pay attention to, let's not yeah. favor anyone. Let's not. No, do no, no, we're not. Anything. We're just saying that. Yeah, some people like if you if you want to start doing when the child when the younger one is five, it's too late. But but also let's not say because this person is older or because this person is younger. Let's not say that at all. Because when we do that, the person who we are who we are helping in that situation, whether it's the younger one or the older one, starts to have that entitlement mentality of because I am this person, these people should always do this. So that's something that we need to unlearn. Overall, eh, one of yeah. the things that one of the things I wanted to say in the beginning was that in all your doing, in all your parenting, there are basically three things that you must ensure that your children have or they don't have. Mm. One, I, maybe I must have said it a while back, is, mm. uh, is uh, what do you call, uh, res respect for themselves, respect for others, mm -hmm. and then three, not having a, any sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a yeah. problem. Some people have grown up, whether from a very early age or whether when they were grown, they've grown up with this sense of this sense of high sense of uh, uh, entitlement, yes. where they expect things to be done for them. The way I raise, I try to raise and advise people who are raising children is that raise them in such a way that they appreciate everything that is given them, and that it is not automatic. Do you understand? And this me? Is, uh, so and those, this is this is going back to the tenet of love your neighbor as yourself. It's what's important, as we said the last time, is everybody we would actually relate better with everybody else once we treat other people the way we will treat, we want ourselves to be treated. And we also ensure at the same time that they are treating us the way that we know that they would want themselves to be treated. So the moment that we begin to do something where we feel that we're being nice or we're being kind and allow somebody to, to be rude to us, to disrespect us, to maltreat us, there's, no, there's nothing good about the idea of being kind or being nice in that way. Once we do that, we are setting the stage for something very unpleasant to happen. So at every point in time, everybody des deserves their dignity and respect from us to them and from them to us. The moment, and this is how we get these relationships messed up, because you start a relationship with somebody and you give them the allowance to do things that they shouldn't do to begin with. Once they start it, we're establishing a pattern. That's why we have to nip anything like that. You don't disregard or disrespect the next person and don't allow them to do it to you. There's nothing like, I like them so much and that's why I'm doing this. If you really like that person, you want your relationship to be respectable. And that's how we go back again to self-esteem. What makes you think that you are the one who should be disrespected? And when you're doing that, you are the one who you are, we are ruining that relationship because yeah. the person who is doing that is encouraged. You are not calling them. You're not calling them to order. And they're You're encouraged. not calling them to order because all of us are human beings. I can I can be doing that to the next person myself. And if you don't call me to order, I can get carried away. So it shouldn't even it should not be happening in the first place. And I want you to take it back to to the sibling thing. Why I think is very important is, for instance, we have that sibling. So we have the one that Coco talked about, where this person is always so great, and the others are now acting out of envy. Then there is the other one. So we can't say that it's always the person who is doing well that they're always acting against. There's always there's also the one where this person is like now made to be the black sheep because this is the one who tells lies. 
This is the one who, when you buy snacks for the children, this one will finish their snacks and go and be eating the other children's snacks. This is the one when, when, when your money is missing, they'll say, it is this person that took it. And you end up finding out that that's the person who took it. If we don't handle those things carefully, this is how we create sibling issues. Because even for the one who is doing those things that are wrong, yes, the person is doing something that is wrong, but we have to treat it with that person. If we make it such a such a case where this person is, is the scapegoat, even though, yes, he's always the scapegoat, we, we make the other siblings ready to gang up against this person. There, there's no surprise or there's no little wonder that in the future, this person one day decides they always, yes, you are the one doing something wrong, but it doesn't mean that the relationship must be destroyed. So they will always be ganging up against me. And so I'm now just going to just leave them. And maybe by that time, he's grown, he's changed, he's he maybe a changed person, but now the relationship with the siblings is lost. So we have, we have our work cut out for us as parents, even though somebody is doing something wrong a lot. And the one that is doing the right thing a lot, we cannot elevate or put down one person. We have to face these children and remember that their, their relationship has to be taken into consideration. Do you, do you know one thing that uh, I I mean I I want to quickly say this. Sorry, Tony. I know that you're supposed to come in now, but I wanted to say that eh, there's something that I've noticed in majority of families, irrespective of the background. All on the altar of trying to keep the family, family. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are swept under the carpet. Good one. Good one that you're bringing this. Now, mm -hmm. what I found out is that there's no unit that can operate efficiently without communication. And so, and more so the family unit. Okay, there's something that uh, my granny used to do, of blessed memory now, used to do when whenever we go our parents were not doing it, mind you. But my granny, whenever we go to spend holidays with her, you understand me? So after every evening, after every day, maybe, you know, we're not going to school, so play around, do all sorts of things. And then she will gather us in the evening, maybe five or six of us, children of our children. I will now say, okay. When you say we're not going to school, some people are going to misinterpret that. What you mean is during the holidays? During the holidays. I said we spend <laughs> holidays with her. Okay. <laughs> we, okay. we, I said we're not going to school then, as in holiday. You don't go to school during the holidays. All right. So, all right. so she will call us and say, and say, I, I now, as we are speaking now, I just remembered, and I just felt if families do that, not on the granny level now, but on the father, on the parent to children level. Okay. Say, okay. She will now say, okay, you, in the, in the, in the afternoon, I, I heard you people quarreling. What did you do? What happened? So this one will say, yes, this was what you did. This was what, why, why did you do it? And then this one will ask, oh, is that I will say, oh, no, I didn't do it. I didn't do that. Or say, so, okay, or say, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean it to be like that. You know, in as, in as light as it is, what you found out was that, he gave opportunity for those who felt they were they've been wronged mm -hmm. to voice their uh, uh, to vituperate over what they thought was done wrongly to them, and mm -hmm. for the people who have wronged to apologize. And what you found out is that the next day, it's a clean slate, mm -hmm. and she will do that almost every evening or every other evening, till we all left for our different parents' houses after the mm -hmm. holiday. I, I was just thinking that would it not be? I would say it's a good suggestion because what if what he left what he created was an opportunity to communicate. And what I see is that a lot of families, one of the problems that actually helps and and creates a deeper rift among yes amongst amongst uh, uh, what do you call uh, siblings, siblings is that a lot of issues. Are not always addressed. Addressed, yes. Yes, they are say they will, they will just wait with the one. Of, oh, and you, you, if your if your sister did that to you, uh, forgive her now. No. Yes. 
You yes. must table. You must let yes. people voice their this thing. And then yeah. you know, okay, you. This is where you did wrong. You. This is where you. This did is wrong. actually. This is actually something in our culture. We do a lot of forgive her now, forgive yeah. him now. Why let are you forgiving the voice. people? Who did? It's wrongdoing. And then yeah. you, as a parent, you cannot say, okay, look. No accountability. This, this is what. Yeah, this is what you did wrong. You. You don't heap the blame on one. Even the person that you still blame the person, so that they don't feel that oh, mommy just blames me. And then you understand. So that way. And come and defend to, yourself. We blame yes, you. Come you, and defend yes. yourself. Yeah. You settle the issue and you say, don't do like that again. And then you, and whenever you see something similar, you to quickly try to correct it. And I think that's one of the challenges where we have communication. Let her be, let families be raised in open communication, not the chaotic type, the organized type, where everybody voices how they feel they've been wrong. And let those who will apologize apologize, and those whatever will happen, let it People happen. Hearing. Yes, let let there be some measure of understanding moving forward. Don't just keep sweeping things. Things are happening every day. You are sweeping them under the carpet. Very soon, the carpet because will we're become human a beings. Heel. The, the carpet yeah. will become a heel. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we are human beings, and we don't take note of uh, psychology, mental, all all that, yeah. all those things. There is nothing that there's no wrong that is done to me that I am going to be happy to overlook. I overlook today, tomorrow I overlook another one, tomorrow I overlook another one. Even if I I I, I try to be a saint, I can be a saint publicly, but it's going to it's it's going to be like a balloon. You press it this way, the air goes that way. You press it here, it goes this way. You can never keep anything under the carpet or whatever, and that it won't have an effect. We we should know that now. And to finalize my submission, the last thing is to teach your siblings, your children, is forgiveness. Explain. Ex now, establish to every one of them that no matter how good you are, you will offend someone. And no matter how good someone else is, they might offend you. That Whenever anybody offends you, always learn to talk about it. To them. To them. And when they say they are sorry, it is in your best interest to forgive them and forget and move on. You have to explain some I know that I know that some in some issues it might be a lot more difficult than I'm just saying it. Yeah. But the ultimate is yourself. Do you understand? The ultimate is yourself, not to keep anybody on your mind or any uh, situation. Is but if if you now say that the person says go to hell, you have done your beat. Do you understand me? And if there's any other way you feel you can address it, always address things instead of letting them linger on. And then keeping them on your mind for weeks, for months, for years. But sometimes people do that because they want peace, in quotes. They, That's what they I'm think saying. that they want peace. So can you? So somebody can explain to us how does this help? Does this make sense? And do you actually get that peace when you keep quiet about wrongdoings? Do you get peace? No, you don't. Okay. I'll say this. Um, I've actually, if I was a very famous person, this my saying would have been a quote. <laughs> you know how they write Nelson something and they say, and they say, my, yeah, and they say Nelson Mandela or something. <laughs> and um, for some years, the thing I say, I always say, there is no peace without justice. Yeah. That's it. I think it summarizes everything. And yeah. that's why, you know, with some people, they see me, at, well, like I care. They see me as a, a hardliner or oh, go, go, is this, go. But I always say to people, listen, I'd rather be like this because I have a very high sense of justice. Yes, in the end, I may still come to the peace, forgiveness and all that. But before we proceed, I want us to actually know, do you know what? This is mine. It is mine, my mind. And I reserve the right to give it to you or not to give to you. Funny enough, also, I'm one of the kindest people that ever walked the face of this earth. I can proudly say that. And that is not bragging. However, you won't want to cross my path. In the mm -hmm. sense that, yes. In the sense that you better be on the right side 
uh, it doesn't bother me if you're my best friend or my worst enemy. The same way I'll met out justice to that my worst enemy is the same way I'll met out justice to my best. And I've, you know, I, I can't uh -huh. be funny. Is it interesting that you're saying to teach your children? And what I've taught my children right from when they were little, remember when I was giving that example of um, at a certain age? you need to now because that baby is no longer the six eight month old ten month old baby that child is now about two years pushing it two and a half you now start putting in those boundaries and one of the things i've always taught them as in these younger ones till i'll look at them and say to them do you know what this toy belongs to i mentioned the sister's name you're not going to have it if you must have it you'd have to ask her nicely and of course when that one goes uh like i'll say say please and they go no please i go that's not the way to say the please <laughs> and i will make sure that your please is not a lip service like you know when you teach children you know initially i'm sure you've all experienced this they'll go if, if they, let's say the name of the the daughter is ada they'll just say please ada and I'm like, that's not the way to say please. Because for them as children, you've said say please, right? The, the so manner, the know. format of yeah. the, the please doesn't matter. But do you know, Uzo, I would hold, withhold that thing. And in most cases, you wouldn't even get it. Because if I teach you how to say the please, remind you how to say the second time, that's all the chances you have. So blow it the second time like a mm, please. That's it. You're not going to have it. And I don't care if you, the fourth time, choose to now say that please properly. So they just learn. The no, just at like the second chance. Because I thought, mm. okay, you did it first time. I've told you no. Say it nicely. And you're still saying please. And you're looking the other way. No, there needs to be the eye contact. Because <laughs> okay. if, yeah, then th that eye contact needs to be there. And you need to say it, it beautifully. It, it has to be. And you know what? I don't care. To, if you like, cry. And, you know, this is after That's you've blown your two you chances. Want to, you do what, what you need <laughs> to do to get it, right? If you want to do what you need to do to get it. I, I, I could tell you for free that children are thought how to empathize. I've said this story, if you don't mind, I'll take a minute to say, because I've told, I, I use my children a lot to share to people, I'm sure. Um, when they were oh, very sorry, little... Oh, okay. okay. All right. Okay. When they were a lot younger, I I tell my friends these this thing and, and they laugh a lot. My children, the first three, I only have three of them then. They which um also as you are, let's say you smashed your head and you're on the floor with blood gushing and everything. Yeah. If they're watching the TV, the cartoon programs, which and they were all under three then, about three to zero, whatever age. Do you know these children will not turn? <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's a true story. And, and they'll just be watching whatever cartoon they're watching. And I'm talking, I'm using the extreme, but, you know, I'm talking about, say, someone has fallen in front of them. You're hurting, you're bleeding. You know, with children, most of them, ordinarily if they see their mom cry or a sibling cry you know they always rush to the sibling what's wrong you know and might actually start imitating because they can feel your pain right mine mm. didn't grow up why mine didn't start off like that now you know what i did one day i think the first one was about three and a half definitely under four i the way i screamed at them and threatened and said i'll smash your head against the wall if from now on you see anyone in pain in front of you. you. You know, it's all back to what I came saying. It's the upbringing, it's, it's the parenting. So I had to teach them. Fast forward how many years after. My children are one of the most empathetic people that grace the planet F, this planet F. As so that in, was deliberate. That was deliberate. As in, if they see you like one whole kilometer away, just even if you're pretending to go, I'm in pain, do you know the lot of them will rush to you instinctively? Okay. I think they're um, almost so these are things we teach. What uh, about what about when there are outside influences that you're not aware of? Because I was saying that I had an experience where I worked briefly with a childcare place, and 
there, there was this particular adult, the one who was in charge, who would treat these children with so much terror and intimidation. You know how when you have a toddler, you know how toddlers, okay, everybody come here or everybody sit down. And this person hasn't sat down. And, and she would just hold on to that child, just push the child forcefully into the chair. Mm -hmm. you know? So many, in so many places. Or, okay, everybody come in here. And the kids are walking through and then she just push, push, push the child by the head. You know, so everyone who wasn't doing exactly what she wanted, she would treat them that way. Do you, you know, sometimes your kids are outside in under the care of other people and you don't know what they're going through. And when mm. they're constantly treated like, like that, this will begin to affect their self-esteem. And then when they come home, they can play, play out that feeling of feeling so little. Now I'm home and with the little ones. Here I can lord it over these ones. Or when I get, as I'm growing, I get older, I go to school, I bully other people. All these things, sometimes they're not necessarily from home. They're not necessarily from home. It's for us to pay attention that sometimes when our kids are not always with us, something else may have happened with them. Do we see anything playing out at home so that we can correct it? That's why we have to do conscious parenting. Well, um, Uzo, it, it, that, what, what you just said, that is one of the reasons why I took a career break 12 years ago. I, I, I just simply couldn't take it. Is, now, I realize, mm -hmm. I, I, I realize that not everyone is in that position, i.e. maybe the husband is not earning enough or to just scrape through, okay? Yeah. Because those are normally during the early years of marriage, isn't it? But yeah. I had to make the choice, and I'm I'm not trying to guilt trip any other mom out there, but I had to make the choice between money and not train my children to be to, to be to, to be good people yeah. to, to be good people. Mm -hmm. Now I made that choice, and I always advise, but no one take my advice, please. But that's just me talking. That please, where possible. It 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 it, do, it doesn't take because you see those formative years. Trust me, you you can't. They're irreplaceable because you know what you just said. It would happen. Look at it this way: that child will be damaged literally for life because they're very for, young. And those things are very they're very impressionable at that time. I I want to I want to quickly say this before I leave. Huh? One of the most important things is that, eh, as Coco said, the first five years of a child. Or even beyond. Yeah, even uh, but I'm saying, I mean, we, we live in different, we live in the yeah, we live in different economic climes. But uh I would say the first five years of a child are extremely important. So to some children, even maybe even up to seven. You no, know, giving deliberate attention continues okay. till their teens. Oh, yeah. sorry, I came to cut short to cut in now. Here's the thing for me personally. I don't want you to stop work first pregnancy at home and you're like, oh, I heard it here. No, the child is still a baby baby. There's there's nothing that they're taking in. But once you know that that child is getting to probably around that two, three, four, that's actually the best time to just say, I'm out of here. So this conversation, um, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot more that has to come in in this conversation. We cannot finish it now because of our schedule. We're going to have to continue it because there are so many things that I want to touch. But today has been that kind of day that we're not able to finish. And so I'm going to let Aki and Koko leave us now. But thank you for being with us. And remember to come back because this conversation is loaded with things for us to learn so that our children can do well, even if we have made mistakes. Aki, <laughs> even, if, even if we have made mistakes and we we didn't know certain things now that we're becoming aware of them let's make the conversation loud so that we can have a happier future and better results right mm -hmm. so right so thank you for being with us on this topic and this episode remember to go through our library to see what resonates with you and give us your comments so that we can further these conversations because that's why we're here and with that enjoy until the next episode bye bye Bye.